by number seven. to the DPSN podcast. My name is Becca Wolf, joined here with Shane Coleman and JC Wolf here to give you a little recap on the last week and a half or so, as well as give you a preview of the week to come. First off, I want to thank Joe Vetter for getting us the copy of the fight song that you heard at the beginning. And good luck, guys. You guys are currently on your way or getting ready to go to your first band competition up in Little Miami, so by the time this uh, airs, you guys would have probably already gone, kicked some butt, and on, been on your way back. So, with that being said, I will hand it over to JC, who's going to give us a little recap on what has happened in the world of women's soccer. Alrighty, uh, well, women's soccer has been on a extended road trip. Um, They have not been at home since, like, August 24th. Um, It's been a season overall of streaks. They started out the year with three straight wins. Uh, They are currently on a four-game slide here. Uh, The competition has ramped up, and playing on the road is always a little more difficult because you got the bus ride, and then you just don't get up for away games um, unless they're against somebody you really want to play. I didn't watch any of these games in person, so I can't really give like a, how the game felt. Um, but in the last four road games, only two goals scored, um, giving up 20 goals. So it's really not, not going well. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't really think I won a lot of road games in my day. I think besides like my senior season when we actually could win on the road. Road games are tough. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, they're definitely looking forward to getting home next week, which I'll talk about the home games uh, when we preview the next one. Um, But uh, I do have stats for the Reading game. uh, Watson did have 12 saves. Um, that's senior Elizabeth Watson. Uh, you know, career goal save. Save. She got what? The save record? Save and shut out. So uh, she performed well with 12 saves. Um, I'm assuming she probably hit double digits in the Taylor game as well. Uh, but yeah, the stats aren't really in there for me to give a full stat range of while they were gone. Um, but yeah, they're, they're probably definitely ready to get back home in front of the fans. All right, thanks, JC. And now Shane is going to touch on both the new Miami game that took place last week, as well as our game against our Crosstown rivals, Reading, that took place last night. So Shane, take it away. Thank you, Becca. Uh, just like the girls soccer team, the football team has been on a road trip, back-to-back road games. Uh, last week, we had a big 52-6 to win over the new Miami Vikings. Big day for the running game. Ran for over 300 yards as a team. 
Kendall Luckett and Brandon Anderson both over 100 yards in that game, and Jace Parsons was three for three with a touchdown in that game passing. Uh, the theme of that game was the quick hitter touchdowns. A lot of one or two play drives that resulted in six points. Uh, it was 52 nothing after three quarters, so dominance by both sides of the ball for the Wildcats in that game. And Luckett and Anderson each had two scores on the ground. So the offensive line did a nice job there as well in that game. Uh, last night, had a tough, tough loss to the Crosstown rival Reading Blue Devils, 28 to 14. He had a quick score by Luckett, opened up the scoring on the opening drive, had a seven nothing lead real quick. Uh, Parsons connected with Brody Armour for a touchdown in the second week in a row. The defense did a nice job holding a very good Reading offense to under 30 points. And Kendall Luckett again had 100 yards on the ground. Unfortunately, it was just a little too much or a little too uh, much of a lead to overcome. Came up a little short. But I mean, that team, they look like they're getting there. They definitely look like they're getting there. Uh, on the season, Luckett currently sits at number three in the CHL with 325 yards on the ground. Uh, Parsons has been smart with the ball. He's got a three to zero touchdown interception ratio. Uh, Brandon Anderson and Cam Gilreath are tied for the team lead with 16 tackles each. And kicker Anthony Stewart is four for four with point after attempts on the year. So we're doing the little things and eventually the big things will take care of themselves. And to touch on our game last night, if you go to our YouTube page early this morning, um, I was on the sideline doing um, some videos. So put together a little highlight, you know, it has Kendall Luckett's uh, long run thanks to the ICRC streaming as well as Brody Armour's interception and both um, and his touchdown. He definitely had a big game. Um, it was a game of benches last night. I was personally there and you know it was one of those things I touched on before we were getting ready here. Uh, Parsons had 55 throwing yards in the game. It probably would have been another 20 to 30 had we not had, um, you know, held or block in the back or anything like that that kind of just brought everything back. Um, so I think, you know, we're kicking ourselves in the foot um, a little bit here. But, um, you know, big game coming up. Um, but with that, I will touch on volleyball. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing two of these three matches they had um, over the course. Taylor was our first stream um, for volleyball. Uh, rookie mistake, I let the laptop die because I forgot there's an outlet that doesn't work um, in the, um, up in the bleachers. So uh, we did not get the third set, but um, you know they they definitely struggled that game. Um, to, you know, Coach Megan Beach, you know, mentions it probably was one of their harder showings this season, and then following that up with Wyoming, um, you know, right after that um, would not be a good you know, one-two punch, they do sit one-two in the league. But Reagan Osborne did have 77 pass points. Um, you know, I've played against and coached against Wyoming, so they probably went after Reagan um, a little bit. And then this past Thursday night, um, I headed over to Marymont. For those of you that obviously don't know where I live, I live about five minutes from Marymont. So took a drive over there and first saw the JV team. When I first get there, the JV team is in a close second set and then they win the third set. Um, varsity comes out, it was a battle all game. Um, just did not work, um, work out in our favor at all. Um, again, just like football this morning, I did post a highlight with some of um, our some of my favorite plays of the year um, kind of a thing. But a couple things I want to touch on just with this team in general. Um, looking over their rotation and their lineup, um, they've got some key spots in the lineup that, you know, once everything clicks is going to be deadly. And the first one is definitely the lineup they come out with. Um, when we have the serve with Grace Loudon starting to serve. Um, it has a really, really strong uh, 
front line at that point with either Jaden Carter or Meredith Suddendorf, Ariana Johnson and Isabella Steins. Um, you know, those three, they're strong. Um, Isabella, I met as a sophomore going into softball season, and she's gotten probably 10 times stronger um, since that. Probably playing softball helps with that um, as well. Jaden Carter has always been a strong athlete. Um, you know, I've known her since she was very, very little. Um, I played with her sister, Amber, um, for three of my four years. She was a year older than me. And Jaden and my sister Jamie used to run around the court. So I've known Jaden um, and that family for quite some time. Ariana, obviously, I've touched on this in the past, very athletic, um, you know, coming from that family. And then on the flip side of that, we have a very strong back line um, in that rotation with Jaden Steely and Reagan Osborne that currently sit one, two for the team in both digs and pass points as well. So for those of you that don't know volleyball offenses and JC and Shane, if you want to chime in with some questions as well, um, you know, volleyball is one of those sports that a lot of people think uh, is bump set spike. That's all they, um, uh, all they get into. And the first thing that JC kind of just mentioned to me is what is a pass point? So when an individual passes the ball, and this, depending on the coach, it is off of a kill or it's, most of the time it's off of the serve. Um, and the thing with volleyball stats is it's very subjective to the coach. So basically you get a ranking from either one to four, or one to five. One being on the low end and a four or five, depending on who your coach is, is the high end. And basically it's, how well the pass is to set up your hitters. So if Reagan takes a pass and it sends Grace Loudon into the bleachers, that's either a zero or a one. But if it sets her up right by the middle where she can set up any of those hitters, which is what Reagan does most of the time, especially on serve receive, that's either gonna be like a three or a four depending on the coach. Um, we've had coaches in the past that were really difficult with that. Um, you know, our coaches the past couple years didn't even put it in the CHL. Um, but being on that coaching staff, I know that we kept it because it was one of my jobs on the bench was keeping track of those points. Um, that way, if we needed to sub out kind of a thing. Um, but so Reagan, last I checked, was in, well in the 200s. Um, she is sitting top five in the CHL. Um, we also have uh, Abby Petty John sitting top five in blocks, which blocks um, is off of a kill and it goes straight down. Um, and Abby, when she does it, it's electrifying. Um, you know, she is slowly becoming one of my favorite players to watch. Um, you know, I was thinking, you know, as I was doing the highlights, like who does she remind me of that I coached with? And, um, because she can get from the middle of the court to either side in like two steps. So very long legs. And, you know, I thought about it, I'm like, I coached somebody that was a lot like this. And it clicked that it was a more awkward Paige Davies. So Paige could get to either side in one or two steps. She was just a little more awkward about it. Um, you know, I had coached her her first year per se in volleyball when she was a sophomore we've known jc and i have known Paige again for years um J jamie and Paige have grown up together she is now at ohio northern um studying to be a math teacher um as well so and another and back to my point about the offense and this is where you guys can chime in on if you have any questions so we play what's called a 5-1 offense. So the numbers sometimes does not make sense. Um, so you've got a 5-1, you've got a 6-2, you've got a 6-6, six, six, and you've got a 4-2. Or, yeah, 4-2. Four, 4-2 two. Four, two is very rare. That's when your setter comes out of the front row no matter what. Um, but we play a 5-1, which means we only have one setter that sets in all six positions 
with five available hitters. So what that means is your setter has to be very, very strong. And Grace Loudon is getting there, definitely. I can definitely see, you know, when we're, when Marymont comes to Deer Park later this, later this year, you know, it's going to be apples to oranges. Those coaches are going to be like, oh, God, what, where did this come from? She had a strong game against Marymont. Um, and Grace is one of them that has grown so much. I coached her in seventh grade. And, you know, the more she gains confidence, she's going to work right in there. Um, I am a lot of times played a 5-1 because um, I knew that's what, you know, varsity was coming up with. And as a coach, you want your setter to – you and your setter to be on the same page. You know, I kind of talk like it's the quarterback in football. If, you know, Jace Parsons and Tucker Berger are not on the same page, you know, our offense isn't going to click. If me and my setter is not on the same page, our offense is not going to click. Um, you know, I was very fortunate um, – a couple of years ago, the, my second to last team, that my setter, who was also my captain, eventually I didn't have to say anything. Like she knew exactly where I would want the ball to go. Um, we just clicked instantly. Um, definitely one of my favorite players to coach, see her grow. I wish she was still back in the program, um, but it, you know that is what it is. So do you guys have any questions about volleyball? So I'm giving JC and Shane the night off um, for Tuesday, and I'll touch more on that game when we go into the preview side. Um, so it's just going to be me. So do you guys have any questions or want to say anything about volleyball? I know Shane made a post literally the night after the Taylor game was, I, wa I just watched three sets of volleyball and have no idea what happened. So do you guys have any questions? Obviously, my brother has, you know, watched me play um, on and off my entire life. For those of you that have seen the CHL side, um, boy soccer and volleyball tend to play CHL matches on the same day. Um, so unfortunately, you know, when we both were in high school, we didn't get to see each other play that much. Um, but he definitely saw me, you know, he got lugged to my games um, when I was younger, and then he did see a couple of my teams um, when I was coaching. Not as much because of his work schedule and I was coaching at 4.30 or 5.30, but he still has been around the game of volleyball. There's times that, you know, I'm watching it in the living room and he might walk in. So do you guys have any kind of questions? I don't have a question, but um, you made a comparison to Abby Pettyjohn. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give my comparison, mm -hmm. um, which to me, she is the right-handed Jamie Burling. Um, pretty much both about the same height, mm -hmm. very extremely athletic. Um, and when they hit the ball, they hit it hard. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference between the two of them I can think of is the fact that Jamie Burling was left-handed and Abby Petty Jones right-handed. But that's that's my comparison, and I watch yeah. Jamie a lot because she she uh, was in the same grade I was, and yeah, she terrified me when she had a, had the ability to hit a volleyball. So. Try being with her at practice. So I definitely agree with JC. Where when I was playing, definitely teammate wise, Abby Pettyjohn and Jamie Burling are two peas in a pod. Um, other than Jamie's left-handed and Petty John is right-handed. Um, you know, coaching-wise, obviously, Jamie was only a year behind me, so I never coached her is where I came up with the Paige Davies side um, as well. I got to remember to give her a heads up to listen to this. Um, a little bit later, she's, like I said, up at Ohio Northern. Um, kind of a thing and we are in the athletic office here at Deer Park High School. Um, Shane, do you have any questions on volleyball since that's kind of the one of the sports that not a lot of our viewers and listeners know too too much about? I mean I don't really have any questions because you explained it pretty well but I just my comment is 
I went to Roger Bacon, and that was, I mean, obviously now they're still a volleyball powerhouse. We won state my freshman year when I was there. Uh, my gym teacher was the legendary volleyball coach, Carol Shawway. Uh, I used to love the volleyball unit when she would coach that because you just knew she had such a passion for it because she's like a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, she never really taught it the way you were talking about it because obviously we're kids in gym class. We're not mm -hmm. going to be playing volleyball. But I used to love diving for the ball, and she used to tell me she wanted to bring me up out of football practice to show her girls how to dive for the ball. But, yeah, I'm sure yeah. my uh, football coach that year, who ironically is now the football coach at Indian Hill, I'm sure he would have been real happy about her doing that. Yeah, <laughs> diving, you know, coming from a former libero is one of those things where it hurts on the gym floor. I was always, you know, anyone who saw me play could attest that I was always on the floor. Um, you know, I've, you know, I coached Reagan. I've obviously been around her now. Her knees and her legs are all tore up uh, with bruises already. Um, I think at the Marymount game, it was like every other play she was on the ground. And I wish I would have got it on video, but I was like in between trying to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, Reagan actually rolled out of a dive. Um, and as you know, that is something that is a very high level. Essentially, you dive and go into a somersault and you essentially get back on your feet. I never got to that point because I had a bad shoulder and um, we were always worried because you go over one of your shoulders. Um, and so I probably would have done that and my shoulder would have popped out of place and I would have been done um, as well um, kind of a thing. So, JC? Um, just, you know, to, uh, stats in football, stats in soccer, are very obvious what they mean. So a goal, obviously you're the person that put the ball in the goal. Assist, you're the person that passed it to the guy that put it in the goal. Rushing yards, it was a rushing play. Passing yards, it was a pass play. Um, feel bad for the O linemen out there. Their stats aren't really shared. I know you're hey, gonna we've got on the test to that. We got the pancakes. I don't think I've seen that on any website that they actually track those. Do they? Oh, we keep track of them mentally. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, uh, to bridge back into volleyball, the the main stats are kind of iffy, like a dig. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Do you just have a shovel and you dig a hole somewhere? Um, so just briefly. Tell the people what a dig is. So, as I said before, um, stats in volleyball are very subjective to your coach. So, when I would stat a game, a dig in volleyball is a pass coming off of a attempt kill, so a hit on the other side. And I'm talking overhand, a push, um, anything that's overhand, so not a free ball over. If and then you get it up to where it's passable, kind of a thing. Okay. Um, next would be kill. Kill Forest to you. Kill is anything that is again overhand, and it goes either straight down or the person shanks the pass. Which a shanked pass is a misplayed ball, essentially. So that you put your arms out the pass and it hits this arm and it goes the other way. Kind of a thing, we call it a shank. You know, just like in football, we do have pancakes, but we're, it's not we're laying on top of each other. It's, you know, you get your hand like just right under the ball. Um, you know, I did that a couple times once. It almost landed me on a stretcher. We were playing Reading in the um, sectional tournament and I had went to the bench, did it, while my setter, who was following, because um, it was a shank pass, so it took us all over. Um, if she would have went head first, we probably both would have been out with concussions. But she went legs first, and her shin went into my neck, and my head went into the bench. I don't know if JC was there, I know my parents were there, and you know, in the OSHA tournament, you don't have to have, you don't necessarily have trainers at your venues. Luckily, our trainer at the time uh, went with us, uh, but the tournament manager was like, don't touch her, we're calling 911. 
And I remember I heard boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, that's probably my mother right now coming down the bleachers. And the trainer was like, no, let me check her out. Um, Because I'll admit, I went numb because of where she hit. And within a couple minutes, I was able to get my feeling back. Thank God uh, I was in a neck brace for my 17th birthday that year. So, uh, JC? Well, just to say, if there was anything within a five-mile radius for her to hit her head on, she would have found a way to do it. And yeah. that, was a, that was volleyball. That was soccer. Uh, you remember the, the, the post and crossbar? She mm-hmm. had some experiences with those hitting her head on it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other softball. Uh, Ace, um, which I know when I was watching, I used to think that it was only an ace if it like you served it and it directly hit the floor. Mm-hmm. And clearly that's not the case. Uh, Becca, go ahead and explain what an ace is. So, yes, that is one way to get an ace, but just like a kill, if the player that goes to pass it shanks the pass, then that's an ace. Um, basically, if they can't get – two good touches on it, um, excuse me, it is going to be considered an ace. And I will always say stats in volleyball are subjective to who is doing the statting. So, you know, those of you that follow us on all all, our, all the social media, if you see anything in-game with stats, those are not the um, official stats. Always go based off of what Coach Beach does and puts in on the CHL website for it. Um, You know, watching Megan coach, she reminds me of essentially a more blunt version of how I used to coach. Um, Megan will tell it how it is, which is working for the girls. Um, And that's what some kids need. They just need, um, hey, you're not playing well, I need more effort. And they that's what they'll do. And that's what Megan does. Um, I am definitely very, very impressed with where this program is going. As someone who has been a part of the program in one way, shape, or form since 2016, after taking four years off to go to college, you know, I was a coach. um, And then last year, I took a step back in the coaching role and started this um, more. And... um, so, you know, still, a, it's almost like I'm a part of every program here at Deer Park. Um, the running joke is I'm the unofficial assistant AD. Um, well, that was last year when I was in this office every day for eight hours. Um, now I have an amazing job at uh, Great Oaks. It still allows me to, you know, come in and do this stuff, um, you know, give you guys the content that obviously you guys are loving. Um, You know, I get tons of compliments. I love going to games, and, you know, the kids are like, oh, she's here. We're going to get videos. We're going to get pictures. We're going to get a highlight or whatever, and it just makes it it worth it. Um, You know, I had Barry Pettijohn come up to me on Thursday, thank me for coming and everything that I will continuously say about Abby. Like I told Barry, she has definitely earned it. Um, You know, Barry and I are friends on Facebook, and it was like every other week they had Abby at a college camp. So, um, you know, I'm excited to see where this team goes and obviously where some of these players go. Um, You know, I'm predicting that it's been a while since we've had a volleyball player um, play in college, Um, other than maybe the club level. um, You know, I want to say Michelle Webb, our previous varsity head coach, was the last one, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, You know, I made the decision early in my senior year that I did not think my body could handle college. Um, So I just kind of said my career is done. Um, You know, in a health standpoint, uh, JC can tell you he makes the um, jokes about the polls and all that. Um, I had a very injury-ridden playing sports career. And, you know, I was a goalie in soccer. I was a catcher in softball, a libero in volleyball. And then when I played basketball, you like, I played like I was six foot. Um, But I'm only 5'4". Those of you that have seen me in person, I am very short. Um, I broke a growth plate, and it kind of, um, you know, stunted my 
growing a little bit. And, um, you know, funny story, you know, we're playing – or we just played Wyoming for – uh, volleyball, but my senior year of basketball, I went up against a girl that was so tall, her elbow on a layup came straight down to my nose and broke my nose. Um, and it was, it was bad. It was bad. And it was only because I'm short. Like that would not have happened if I was the same height as her. So I think we've hit volleyball quite a bit. Um, you know, I do think it's very important that you guys c kind of learn the game as well, I know there's things that I really don't maybe understand about football, even though I watch it constantly. You know, I grew up playing soccer, but there are certain things that, you know, since I haven't played, I used to ref, I maybe don't know. Um, so that's going to be some things you're going to hear in this podcast is us having that conversation between the three of us. Obviously, we really won't have to touch on volleyball at it anymore. Um, so we are That's an understatement. Uh, so we are going to for the last spot in the recap is our boy soccer team who you know last time we talked had a very big win against Reading very exciting game the three of us were there so JC unfortunately he takes it away with multiple teams cuz he is our main commentator for soccer so he has to come on twice. You know, the first time we did it, he was like, I need a break in between the two sports. So we definitely gave it to him. So, JC, boy right. soccer. Well, Becca, thank you for your life story of volleyball. We really appreciated it. Um, while we, we, I did bring up stats, so I want to just shout out all soccer defenders out there. I was one of them. Not till high school. But there is not a single stat out there for him. Not one. I'm looking at the website right now, and we have saves and shutouts. The goalie is the only person that gets a stat. So mm -hmm. just a quick rundown. Uh, hi, Sarah. Sarah's a really great defender. No one's going to know that based off looking at the stat line. All they're going to see is a 6 nothing loss and be like, oh, defense must not have done that well. But no, so uh, this is my official petition to track interceptions, steals, Anything like that for the, your defenders out there. If I have to do that myself and give it to you weekly, I will. Um, but, yeah, that's just my two cents because, uh, yeah, defender life. All <laughs> right, so to the boys' soccer. I won't pull it back in and talk for 45 minutes. But, it was 25. Uh, so the boys' soccer team, uh, they played three games. We got to call one of them, uh, which was the Taylor game. Uh, the score did not do that game justice. Um, it just like really blew up late in that second half, uh, which was really refreshing to see the competitive level against, uh, at the time, the CHL leader. So if you can compete and put effort against uh, teams like Taylor, Wyoming, and them, then that will better you when playoff time comes. Um, so I was really impressed with how they looked for probably the first half into halfway through the second half. Because I think the score at half was only like 3 nothing, 2 nothing, 3-1. Thanks. You can talk. <laughs> you don't have to give me hand signs. Um, but so, yeah, uh, and then they, they did play a neutral site game, which don't even get me started with those. I think that is the – it's a, dumbest thing in the world. It's the Cincinnati public schools that. But like, who gets like? We were considered the home team, but we had to play it somewhere else. Uh, we did pull out a win in that game, so that's impressive. Because <laughs> you really don't get in a neutral size game until deep in the playoffs. Um, yeah, because we won a home game and then lost at Marymount my senior year, and I think even like that boys team that went one step further than we did there was no neutral site games yet no I don't think so because I think if I remember correctly because that was before I really had started yeah we don't we don't have much of yeah my day and a little bit after I want to say it was the year that both the boys and the girls ended up in a PK shootout in their last games yeah Perfect. but um yeah so uh a one in two week um, they ended up beating uh, – who they beat? 
Um, that's not actually a question for you guys. That's a question for me. I lost <laughs> it. Uh, they beat Clark Montessori 3-2, to two, um, which shout out to uh, Devin, freshman, scored his first goal of his high school career that game. Um, and then Taylor was that 7-1 to one game that probably played like a 4-1 to one game. It was really entertaining, had a lot of opportunities. And then just last night, uh, CHA got the better of us. Um, but yeah, it seems like anything going forward, everything goes to that number seven, Johnny, yeah. uh, which is kind of weird because some of the best players in the world wear seven. Yeah. You have Cristiano Ronaldo and my favorite guy on Tottenham, uh, Hing Min Song. <laughs> um, but so yeah, everything runs through seven right now. Um, but I think a lot of that is a couple devastating injuries. Um, they actually, you can hear them in the background in our DBSN mm -hmm. <laughs> broadcast with uh, Jack Walker and Logan Murphy, who would both really help the team if they were on the field. Jack Walker is the starting center back. And so with him out, um, some positions had to be changed. Uh, Chenzo had to move back to center back, which leaves you open in the center midfield where he usually is. Um, but they both think that they're knee injuries, so we might not see them too again. I hope we do, especially Jack since it's his senior season. Um, senior season. Uh, Logan's a senior yeah. too. My bad, Logan. I didn't know that. And the thing about the Taylor game, and I think Shane is the one who said it, it could have very easily been like three to one instead of that seven to one. There was a couple of close calls, um, couple. I try not to talk about the refs, guys. It's really hard. And that's all we're going to say. You know, coming from an old, a former ref myself, you know, obviously we are up in the press box. We can't see what the refs see. Um, so we won't touch on officiating, but it was, it was close calls um, kind of a thing. So, um, and it was one of you guys that had mentioned this could have very easily been you know, three to one, because um, I know there was, you know, one call in particular that led to a PK, and then they go and they score a couple afterwards. So it's like you've got that momentum situation, and, um, you know, that's when you have to think in your mind as a player to just, you know, not worry about the refs, just play your game, and that's for any sport. Um, you know, in volleyball, there's um, some refs that are very touchy on the one-two calls. I know Shane and I had a conversation at the Taylor game because we had one of those refs. Did you just call it a one-two call? Yeah. Why don't we call it a double hit and then That's explain just... a double hit? <laughs> so a double hit typically happens with setters. Um, it's when essentially you go either your right left or your left right. Um, and Grace was getting that call quite a bit, and it was one of those that was very close half the time. So, Grace, if you are listening to this, I know you are with band, so if you listen to this before the next game, don't let the refs get into your head with that call. Um, so, so when I was, say, maybe early part of high school, um, refs would look at the spin of the ball. And then by the time I got to coach, they realized, oh, wait, there is individuals that are more right-hand dominant than left-hand dominant. So that's going to cause a spin to the ball, even if they contact it correctly. Um, and Grace, I think that is some things that had happened in that game as well. Um, but you just got to play through it. You're going to be fine. Um, just keep that head up, and you've got it. Listen to Coach Beach. She definitely has your best interest at heart. Um, so with that, we are going to jump into a preview of uh, the week coming up. So this week is actually homecoming week. Um, so we have got three kind of special event nights happening. All of our varsity teams are going to be taking part in some form of special event night. Um, as someone who has helped with scheduling, we do this on purpose. You know, both uh, myself and Greg Huster, um, it just works out a lot better. We can get a lot more people out. So it kicks off on, and we're going to go into more detail with the ones it involves. 
Um, so Tuesday is youth night for volleyball. So youth players, you should have, um, you know, catch all of this information on social media. Um, you know, you wear your jersey, you get in free. And I know in the past you got to stand with the team for like the national anthem and the introductions. And it's kind of cool, um, especially because our youth program is still fairly new. Um, you know, we are just seeing that come up. And then Thursday, both of our women's and men's soccer teams are going to be taking part in the annual, we call it the AHA night. So that is the American Heart Association. So alumni Matthew Bossy has a heart condition, played soccer. Um, he and his family have um, participated in the heart mini um, since Matthew was younger. I know I had um, gotten close with Kathleen, Matthew's older sister, um, and so I took part in that for quite a bit of time, even it was like high school throughout college. And so they've got a team called the Matthew Mighty Marchers. So you can go, it's a $10 spaghetti dinner, and the proceeds all will go back to the American Heart Association through the Matthew Mighty Marchers a uh, team that participates in the heart mini tip a lot of the people do the walk but there's definitely different lengths of the run um that take place in uh the spring normally it's like march kind of a thing and then on friday is um you know the homecoming game against taylor um we're gonna have a lot of people there um, as well as obviously the crowning of the homecoming king and queen at halftime. I think Shane, you were here for homecoming last year, so um, I can't. JC, I can't remember if you were here. I'm normally on the field for half of this. I think mom was my first game calling. Yes, I was at home. Um, so with this, we are going to touch on the schedules coming up. Um, this is a little bit of a longer podcast. Um, as well but so JC is going to lead us off with our are you going to do both soccer teams together or are you going to split it I'll do them both okay um, so as uh, Becca said um, it is a, a very special week for the both soccer programs uh, that night of the uh, heart game like the, that's just what I call it is uh, Seven Hills, um, should be fun matchups. Um, and uh, just some background, I uh, Matthew was my teammate for a year, and I played with his older brother, Michael, for four, all four years. We were both in the same grade. Um, so it's good every time I see it, because uh, Matt, Matthew's a really good kid. Obviously, he's not really a kid anymore, but uh, it's a it's a good event. Come out, show your support. You get two games of soccer. You come early enough. Obviously, you only have to pay for one. So uh, a nice little double dip night. Um, this week for the streaming schedule is going to be very girls heavy. Um, the Seven Hills game is the only boys game we have on the schedule. Um, well, home game. Uh, they do travel to Wyoming. Um, uh, which anybody that has, well, anybody in the CHL knows Wyoming's no easy task ever. And they are the reigning state champs. So uh, be interesting to see how the boys fare. Um, and then they play Monday at Claremont Northeastern. Don't know a dang thing about them. Um, They're probably tough with that uh, conference. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know anything about them. We'll see how it goes. And uh, girls also play Wyoming, which if anybody rem remembers the podcast from last week, after uh, Becca stole my thunder and stole the Reading game to watch, I then called out the Wyoming game, um, which that's the first game out of the road trip. So uh, I get a big gap to kind of see how everybody develops, see if anything's changed, see if the the kind of road woes has weighed on them a little bit. And Wyoming's not an easy team to come home to, I got to say. Um, but, yeah, so we'll have the girls for uh, Wednesday and Thursday with Wyoming Seven Hills come out, uh, show some support. And uh, 
like, and you know, come watch the girls' game because Heglin is still on record watch. It's been a tough road trip for. It's been a tough, tough road trip for everybody. Um, but yeah, so. All right, well, it looks like we're passing it on to Becca. And uh, yeah, go Wildcats. Um, so volleyball this week, um, they've got a, I would say, interesting week. So Tuesday, they are home against Madeira. I will be here um, for DPSN. Like I said, I'm giving JC and Shane a night off since they are very soccer heavy and we've got a big football game on Friday night. Um, and then they have to travel, and Madeira is currently sitting right behind Wyoming and Taylor in the CHL. So Madeira is one of those schools that are very hit and miss every year, so it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, kind of what happens there. And then they follow up with going to Indian Hill, which as a player I was never a big fan of playing in their gym. It's like a very high gym, um, so that's going to be a tough um, – matchup and then on Saturday they have to take on Purcell at 10 a.m. Um, and that is early um, because it is uh, the day of the homecoming dance and you know coming off of the um, the game the night before that tends to go a little bit longer it's going to be interesting to see you know kind of where the girls head is at with it um, I haven't decided if I'm going to head over to Purcell or not. It probably will depend on how Friday night goes for, um, for me kind of a thing. Um, so we are going to finish it out with uh, Shane is going to preview the Taylor Deer Park football game. Thank you, Becca. As we were talking about, obviously it's homecoming, so you've got the parade at 6 o'clock before the game. So if you're coming to the game, make sure you get there early because you don't want to get caught in the parade. Uh, I think I saw it starts down at St. John the Evangelist and it ends in the parking lot of the school. So make sure you get there early if you don't want to get caught in traffic. Um, Taylor's a good team. Uh, they come in, they're 3-1. and one. They're in fourth place in the CHL, but that's because we've got a three-way tie between Madeira, Redding, and Wyoming, who are all 4-0. and oh. Uh, they had a big 42 nothing win over Finneytown last night. Last season, we'd like to get a little payback from last year after that 31-7 loss last year. Uh, my history with Taylor, I played them twice in middle school, so this is a long time ago, but they were usually really big in terms of body size back then. They had some big dudes. Uh, I think that's usually a theme with Taylor. But, again, they're not going to be a pushover. I mean, this is a good team. Their quarterback, Jackson McGowan, leads the conference with 718 passing yards, and I do not think that includes last night. Um, their receivers, Aaron McFarland and Jeremiah Rudisell, they're number one and two in receiving yards going into last night. And defensively, they're led by the number two interception guy in the conference. That's Grant Booth. So the Wildcats are definitely going to have to bring their uh, big boy shoes to play that game on Friday night. And I hope everybody's ready to go because it's going to be a good one, and we got to get back on track. All right, so with that, we are going to close it out. I am going to obviously make our little plugs. You know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get notified when we post, when we go live. Um, you know, like us on both the Deer Park Athletics as well as the Deer Park Sports Network pages on Facebook and Twitter and follow um, the Deer Park Athletics page on Instagram. If you have any questions um, that you would like us to answer, um, you know, comment on one of the posts. Normally we post out um, when we're going to have the uh, podcast get released. Um, or if you see one of us at a game, normally I'm on the sidelines, you know, go ahead and, you know, come up. You know, I promise I don't bite. You know, ask us the questions. Um, that is what partially we are here to do is to, you know, educate. Because um, I know, you know, there are some things with football that, you know, maybe I'm thinking that's one of you guys out there are thinking as well. Um, you guys with, like, our conversation today with volleyball. Um, so with that, we are going to end the podcast and for next week, we probably will, we might be on a two-week, like, gap, 
uh, due to homecoming. We've, the three of us have to figure all of that out. Um, so we will catch you in our next broadcast, which is mine on Tuesday against Madeira. Uh, we welcome in the Amazons for the gym. We've got a pretty hectic week. And yeah, go Wildcats. <laughs>